positionally and, and chemistry wise and some of their utility they play very well the eternal fire lads i mean this is the kind of map where riflers can really take over Ooh, good start for calyx opener onto mertz takes endpoint down a peg looks like the eternal fire must have won that knife round as well choosing to start on that ct side so get off on the right foot two men set up on the b site as well with X Flat very close. Open wants to jump up just to aid um, the boys. You do have Woxic looking to play clutch here from Ninja. Boy Calix playing around Rops here. Just trying to get some info. In comes that Util. The site flood to follow. Molly just going to be tanked up by Calix, which is a dangerous prospect. But again, backside not going to be cleared. Woxic, he's going loud because he's got the P2K. And he's going to be able to find at least two kills so far. So real and able to find anything flicking around, figuring out which CT to shoot at. Boros now 1v4 angle. He's already been able to find the first kill. Zentara and x player both quite low with Emor. And the swing off of this contact. Oh. But he's going to be gushed as well. So a winnable situation. Boros, what? he's seen the backpack there. But I don't think that that has any uh, hit model. So it's an awkward situation for him to be in. You have Zentara's ready to swing off that contact, but he's also cautious. One bullet from death as well. There's the headshot found. Boros, 20 seconds to play with now, and he's just trying to figure out exactly where to swing first. There it is, Zentara's aim trained on the perfect position, and he'll swing and connect eventually. But it got dangerous there for Eternal Fire. I suppose it makes sense. Yeah? Shooting the backpack. Can't, can't kill him. Yep. Unfortunate for Boris. I wanted him to win that. I'm going to be real. I really wanted him to win that. Blocking was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Scooshing absolutely everyone. Angle isolation. Sharp shots. Crisp. Great movement. Mm. No hops. No hops, though. And no W. So, unfortunate for him. But, look. Knows that he's here to play. Couple of confidence frags on the board as well. That's it. Bit of a force. Coming in for endpoint. Gonna fight for control of this half, Whoa. and it hasn't started well. Mighty Max cops a whole bunch of nate, and nate damage, and uh, two players go down in the blink of an eye for endpoint. Nothing's happening in mid either. Not how they wanted their force by to go. Crucial. Bit of a rough game on D2. Let's see if he's gonna be able to pick up the pieces and have a more solid vertigo. Swing comes in, and that's gonna be bomb control. Locked down. Awkward. Surreal. To be able to at least push his way up B stairs. He's still got one more player here to get past. That's Calix, which was pretty easy considering Calix had already been knocked down to, what, 14 HP. Hmm. Now, 1v5 angle. Coming realistic. Yeah, honestly surprised Calix has taken that duel on uh, such low HP. A1S in Surreal's hands. Look, even if he doesn't pick up the round... Just taking this into the next round and trying to get some damage done with it. Be the worst thing. Drop a dig over to one of the other boys. Still looking to see if he can find at least one more. And might be rewarded for the patient walk back through spawn. Nice little angle here to save on. Cover from anyone... Making their way in from mid, Emo. Happy just to dance around Maze. Got to find anything. The round, quite important. Colonel Fire. Locking down a second and not getting too big for their boots. Happy just to play around the bomb. Make sure it's 100%ed and they still have some money now to carry across into the next endpoint. Get the, uh, at least, you know, consolation prize of an A1S to play with. Surreal. Still has that armor. Everyone else upgrading a couple of pistols, but that's about all she wrote. Nurts has a nade. Where's this one going? Looks like it's going to be bounced off the roof here at mid. There it is. Chip damage. CTs. No one close to it, so the nade stack does not work as intended. Woxic expecting it playing back on jump up. Yeah, just going to get some real boost with the rifle, and already he's found something with it, and it's in a retrievable position as well, so... Hmm. Good use of that boost allows Poros to recycle the rifle, try to find some more usefulness, and actually another one picked up by Nerds. No armor for the T's here, but 
couple of rifles which could get some further damage done. Mm. And full HP Mighty Max gets gifted uh, brand new weaponry. Corey's happy with that one. Nerts looking to be the information gatherer. With low HP, Boros connecting onto the head of Zantara's Emort. Now, just going to be trying to buy some time for these rotations to come through. X Flower, 22 HP. Off the contact, trying to get something working for him. But that Galil, not as accurate as you like. Mighty Max falling eventually. And 21 HP here on Nerds, who has to figure out exactly which way he needs to go. Push up towards the top. Yellow is... Oh, oh hasn't no. worked out for Calyx. He's whiffed it with the MP9. And it's all up to X Flower now. Here towards Lobby. Looking at Clutch. Yeah, Nerds with 21 HP. Incredible that you can't convert that with an MP9. Not sure what went on there. 20 seconds on the clock, though. Nerds needs to get a wriggle on. Mm. Leaves this too late. Might only have one tap to play with. Still just trying to find this position of X Flower. Started to go forward. No. Hold this ground. Flash through. And X Flower will clutch eventually. So but it's expensive. dangerous. Oh. So expensive. If you get the bomb plan as well, that's great for endpoint. Yeah, they didn't get the round, but money's so looking money. fantastic. Like 6 plus K on most of the players. You take a bunch of guns off the CTs. Gives them a massive in, in towards this first gun round of just wedging themselves straight into this half. It's that 40... 48 rounds in the first game. That is roughly the same amount of rounds. It's exactly the same amount of rounds that was played in two maps in the uh, order game. <laughs> yeah. Well, both of these teams going hard at it. Exactly what you want to see from a conference game like this and open up. Oh, yeah. One for one on ramp. Oh, that favors just yet yeah, really depends on how much impact Emor finds here, and he's found a great timing. He always seems to do so. Mm. Boros trying to clean him out, and oh, does so. Yeah, three v three now. X flat a little bit too far away. I thought he'd be closer to try to help out uh, Emor, but missed the mark on that one. Yeah, well, they kind of had a false sense of security. I think Emor thought he was going to mop up there, but traded back. Molly. X Flower deeper in the lane. Good sight. Alex here as well, just trying to play the offline. And oh, Nerds, no, awkward situation. He's chipped down to 58 HP. Just to get on the line, but still. Pulled out, and Alex surely gets that kill. Make it the double as Boris falls as well. Surreal's position known in the one on two. Bomb in hand, and the spam comes through. Calix picking himself up a triple for the round, and four in a row for Eternal Fire. But again, the economy, it's just all over the place for Eternal Fire. Yeah, two guns taken through is not really the pass score you're looking for. No. It's going to bankrupt the economy on the reinvestment here for the CTs, whereas Endpoint, they can reinvest as well. So, still on the precipice. That reset potential are the CTs. If Endpoint could take advantage. A pretty good test of stamina for both of these teams here. Mm. Box sick. Hands and delivers. Molly. Buys him a little bit of extra space to play around, but only holds the same line. Fade away. Oh, he's made. If Nurts is feeling confident with this position, he's again amid all on his own. Mm. In point, trying to turn this four on five around by making some inroads towards B. Calyx is over here. Actually, three players over here. Not a whole lot of utility to play with, but. Mm. Utility being layered in from endpoint so they can scale onto the site. See, he's still trying to contest though, Mac, and that's okay. a beautiful timing from Nerd to come up over jump up. Boros finds a pick as well. This is just falling apart for Eternal Fire. And Nerds, I mean, 
he had a bit of a quieter dust too compared to Mirage. So to see him start to get warm up, warmed mm. up, I think that's a bit of a win condition for Endpoint. More now, running himself the upgrade to this AK at mid. An interesting uh, series of events over towards the B site. See the two players felt X Flower didn't want to be seen as a beta, so decided just to smash it through the gen smoke and uh, jump at his opponents with that MP9. Of course, that sometimes can be effective, but you're really hoping to get up into someone's face if you're going to be going for the jumping approach because SMPs. Here it is. That I mean, push over jump up is so damn perfect for nerds. It wasn't very subtle. No. He was stomping, but. Uh no reaction. Maybe, I don't know whether it was all of the noise from the utility made it quite hard to hear him, or it was, a, well. it was a case of the bystander effect, perhaps. Mm. Uh, old mate's got it. But he didn't. Oh, he got the force buy from Eternal Fire, because their money is pretty damn cooked. That's... Good approach from him so far. Nice flash to get him across the line. But again, Woxic up on big box here at mid. It's a very hard position for the T's to crack, especially if there's going to be attention drawn. There would have been attention drawn from X Flat. Either way, Woxic gets away scot free. That's going to be a rifle retrievable if the CTs decide to re aggress. But it's just going to be sight thereafter. Zantara's as well. It's a pick over towards the A site. Who's still here over towards B? Trying to hold tight towards the girders. I know you love your girders, Mac, and so oh. does Calyx, and there's a good reason for that. Crucial left all on his lonesome, but he's hitting a couple of shots. Okay. Slower start to the map, but firing up just when it matters, and Zatara is just going to be holding oh. double you. Oh, leg comes the leg. through, but it's not enough to net a kill. And unfortunately <laughs> for the man, Crucial not going to be able to find himself the clutch. Zentaris, however, going to be very happy with picking up the AWP, picking up the round, and stopping Endpoint from finding any momentum. Uh, but again, as you mentioned, of course, yes, that is a sturdy girder. Of course. One of the favourite spots of all the big side anchors out there. And Crucial was really putting something together there. Love the way the model looks. Really did just dump, uh, duck straight behind that crate. Yeah. Didn't see him at all. Another buy round. I thought really for sure someone was going to be broke after that one, but uh, no, B. You'd think so. Being blessed into round number seven yet again. Contest towards stairs and ramp for both of these teams. Oh. Well found by Woxic. A lot of damage off the Crucial and Santaris knows he smells blood in the water. Absolute robbery again. Antares knows his lines well here on the vertigo. Nerds expecting E more to be in that position at the sandbags. I feel like we're getting a bit of a repeat of Mirage right now. Couple of individuals on endpoint hitting pretty hard and eternal fire. All the names that we know well. For real. Dangerous position. Gonna fight against two men towards B, draws attention and pulls out some extra util from those CTs too. But with 50 seconds remaining now, still some smokes for the A site players to use. Gonna slow down any push that comes towards the A side of things. Across the line they go, Woxic again, almost finding another collateral. Did a couple of this series so far. Gonna be hunting for a little bit more action over towards the elbow. There you go, Mighty Max. Out of the equation, Zentaris chimes in. And it's gonna be another for Eternal Fire. Putting on a show on the CT side to kick things off on Vertigo. Beautifully done. And point though, with that loss bonus, even though they didn't get the bomb plant together, can keep the buys coming. Mm. And it's not like there's some crazy amount of money built up by Eternal Fire just yet. The window's still open for Endpoint to step through. Wouldn't mind to see a pause or something. Have a bit of a chat. Or something that Endpoint did underutilize a bit on some of these maps. Mm. Maybe they're just hoping that the, the next gun round will be better, right? Perhaps. 
grenade stack. Not going to hit the mark over towards Sandbag. Centaurus just chipped down to 43 HP. Again, just so much spam coming through from Diggity. Lane. Elbow. Whatever you want to call it. Centaurus again. For as much damage through the wall as possible. And he's going to find some. Should be happy with Boris on 32 HP. Crucial on just 25. Point now, just looking to regroup and smash their way in towards B. This is Woxic over here. Can he weaponize that AWP initially, but he's still got a bit of util to fall back on. Kallax has got a counter flash for him. Ooh. Is he going to be able to see a damn thing, though? Good timing on the flash, and Boris crossing early. Kallax stopped the cross all the way to sight, and a molly as well to slow things down. X Cloud coming in, making sure no one's hidden. Was that ninja position, but the T's, they're fully aware that they have to play aggressive up against these rifles. No one knows that they went forward, but Nerds, that default plant can't stay here for the post plant. Actually, it's not the default plant. It's kind of aggressively for Gent. CT's not tapping just yet. Nerds looking to play here close to danger. Beautiful. Headshot found and should be able to win the one-on-one -on -one if played correctly oh. spotted and there it is 2v1 the clutch comes through nerds picking up a triple there in the post plant and that's a big round for endpoint to win yeah just positionally so sound crosshair placement and the movement from this man has been pretty on point mm. two out of three maps Mac is very cooked. I just want you all to know that. Me? I'm yeah. fine. Uh, we got a force in here for Eternal Fire. Right. Even up their money. Their money is pretty good. Ooh, okay. Shooting nothing but toes for Calyx. Unfortunate. Hard angle to fight sometimes as Nurt is going to be cracking skulls at mid as well. Any more? Oh, spotted? Surely. No, I think Crucial looked at the radar as soon as, like, he saw, I was looking oh. at his player cam and I saw his eyes wander. Unfortunate timing for him. Robbed. Nate as well. How's that missed? I think it's bounced out the back of the map and not done damage. But it definitely should have. Either way, Mighty Max just going to be dominating the B site. From jump up. I mean, Any more. Got away with one robbery, but not a second. Mighty Max. Gonna be able to find himself the triple. Maddie Max. Maddie Max. I went to say Mighty, but and Max and Maddie Max. I'm Pilski was right. I'm cooked. <laughs> I just figured it out. That's the second time that Endpoint have just utilised that mid lurk up over the jump up to uh, get themselves a, a round win, and not only just a, a gun round win, but also an economic reset, good for two. Really going to help Endpoint get them get their way into this T side half. I love this from the C. Obviously, Endpoint did expect it. They heard those flashes coming through into T spawn. Mm. It's a nice little lineup for those pop flashes. However, uh, didn't turn into anything really. Only crucial falling in the round, and that rifle barely touched at all from the Eternal Fire players, but Endpoint starting to fire up, getting that momentum going here as we get into the 11th round. Oh, what are we going to do if we're Eternal Fire, though? No AWP, no kits. We're on one of these light util buys, which kind of pigeonholes you into certain strats, early round aggression or mid round aggression off the you know, dry walks towards ramp or the pop flashes. Endpoint, I feel like this is where you, you see some Good T side teams able to leverage utility to win rounds. Oh, uh, nope. With that smoke as well, just able to find one over the top, but that scaff is not going to be enough to stop the bullets from coming through. So it will be traded eventually. End point. 4v4 situation should favor them as the T's. Oh, Zentara's one way over the top. So many dirty one ways, man. Crazy. Oh. That's a nightmare. Full spam. He's he's been spamming so many people through the smoke. There's still two players over here. Oh. One towards the jump up. Oh. But Nerds, this guy is on fire tonight. Oh yeah. Him and Boris really impressing everyone watching. Putting their team 
on their backs just when it's necessary. And the CT is off the back of that, happy just to save with the man disadvantage because they got no cash in the bank. They got nothing to play around, and it's just two AKs that they can carry across to the next. But endpoint, very close to tying things up here. Six to five. It's always beautiful to watch someone just thriving inside the structure. So I feel like that's what the Nerds is doing at the moment. Just getting 2Ks on like no nonsense angles. He's not doing anything gimmicky. It's not outstanding like mechanical aim or anything like that. It's just really, really good fundamentals and reading the timings well and knowing the angles. I'd say it is good mechanical. Good mechanical? Ability. Yeah. Let Cross me finish placement. my sentence before you roast me, Mitch. I'm not roasting you, honestly. It is almost dinner time. It's 9.30 a.m. and I'm hungry. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm really hungry. <laughs> Hungry for more Counter-Strike. No. What? Yes. Yes is the answer. Maybe and the only though. answer on this broadcast, Mitch. <laughs> Please. Ooh, oh, that's nice. Half by. What a dangerous one. Well, the AK put in the hands of the right man and in the right position. That's going to be two nice picks early on. End point. Their life's a little bit harder now. The two-man disadvantage. Very, very hard. No Nerts, no Boros. So, got to uh, make the uh, ultimate Brit friendship, make something happen, I suppose. Well, a lot of players with only pistols, so could help out, but Xantara's first point of contact towards Sandbags is a scary prospect. This position, though, played a few times now, and the T's heads up every single time, expecting that position. Zentaris, that's going to be one of the rifles dealt with. Endpoint could have just found the entry, get back into the round. Still a fair bit of util. Get onto a site here, but Surreal just playing that offline. Smash his way through, jump up, walks it, spotted there with the dig in CT, but the crossfire going to be a little bit too much. Surreal, though, flicking around and tapping heads. Get a control of the B site and even in the odds. Bring it back to the 2v2. Yep. Got to put Crucial in that post plant because the nade has denied Surreal getting back off the site, but at least he's put the bomb down. No kit on the retake here and no smoke for cover. Let's see if he can connect. Got this cross to site. Postman spotted. Molly ticking oh. away, but Crucial clutches up a storm and there you have it. 3v5. Endpoint, bring it back. The pistols and the opening kills from Eternal Fire, not enough to get another round on the board. I feel like it was always made too easy for them some in some scenarios. Mm. Like that fight towards middle. You know, whenever you up 5v3 like that, you got a whole bunch of pistols at your disposal. You want to try to weaponize throwing bodies at the other team and making them work for the picks. There was that point, I think Voxic got the... Two tap on the body, which, you know, old patch, old deagle, definitely gets that kill. But you need that third bullet. And obviously when you're spamming the deagle, it just gets more and more inaccurate. So it's a little bit harder to get the close range shotgun deagle kills. Hmm. We've got Calyx on the orc this oh. time. And speaking of 3v5s, let's see if Eternal Fire can turn one around because they're going to have to. I mean, caution to the wind in terms of the rotates. Calyx playing retake on B with the AWP. You can see both of the riflers want to get active, but that's where Boros punishes and Endpoint get further ahead. Mm -hmm. Looking to try to take the lead in this T-half. Let's see if Calyx can punish. Spotted that on the unscope. Like he might just want to save the AWP instead. Nerds. Timing definitely favours him. Calyx goes for that second jump as well. And... Midair with the AWP. you got to be praying to Gaben if you want to hit those shots. And it looks like he did not pray this time. Endpoint, though, in the lead. 7-6. to six. Really wrangling that gun round of Eternal Fire. Uh, and making it look pretty easy. So, now we're getting very deep in the half. Only two rounds remain. And the economy is there to go for. Bit of an iffy buy for Eternal Fire. you got Emor yeah. prioritizing... 
The A1 S over U tilt. Yeah, this is very important here, Avert. There's no U tilt. There's no mollies. Try to contest map control. Yeah. It's the HE nades, and X Flout's the only one with flashes, and he's actually the one on the aggressive line towards middle where he can't really use them at all. Almost would have been great for him to drop that, them over to someone else, perhaps. Oof. And this is basically the game plan for Eternal Fire. Try to weaponize one ways, but when that doesn't work for them, where do they go? Mm. They are some nice one ways. However, it is strength in numbers here. No one on the line to spot that push towards yellow. If Burros can find himself some timing here, there it is for one. And Mighty Max strikes on the second. A site open for business, but the bomb left behind for now. That's going to rely on Surreal coming in for the rotation, but look at x -Flout. He's gone down the ladder and now found himself the objective. Boros tapping heads, but x -Flout, no, he's ran away. He didn't see the bomb on the bridge. Oh, he's made the wrong decision. Unbeknown to him, but oh my. He saw a world where it worked. Yeah, potentially. He found that pick up or uh, boosted on the box, but like, I don't know. It felt like there was very few universes where Eternal Fire were winning around like that, unless someone gets absolutely ballistic and multi-frags. Yeah. Or that re-aggression in towards ramp just catches Endpoint off guard. But the Endpoint's looking very switched on. They're working well as a unit. They're clearing out all the angles, playing well off of each other. Which, this deep into the series, to see them switched on like this, it bodes very well. And they claim the majority on this T side. Good surreal. Cheeky moves. Crab walking up a storm, makes his way to Jen to get a bit of cover, then looks for the pick. X Flout on the common save angle. Gets his head taken off, and there you have it. End point now. Two rounds in the lead. Looking to make it three as we head into the final round of the half. Of course, Eternal Fire did go for the force in the previous round, which leaves them with next to nothing. Going into the final round of the half, Util still very thin indeed, and the economy definitely favoring endpoint as you get towards the final round of the half. Yep. Well, we're setting ourselves up for some stairs control if possible on endpoint. We'll see if they use that as the launching pad for some kind of exe or whether they're just looking for the pick. There it is. Nice little smoke on the front of sight to try to buy some extra time for Eternal Fire. Little angle going to be held as well. Very sure. Wants to go over the top, but again, the smoke in this position. It's a very disadvantageous situation if you walk through it before it fades and almost manages to find the line, but he takes a whole lot of damage now. Got Calyx as well. Hidden. Ninja, Emor pushing middle. As Nerds shouldn't get away with anything this round. Woxic holding strong, and what do you know? The rifle's starting to work out. Crucial 1v4 angle. We'll find the first, but all three CTs lined up here. Two on the wall, one up on the Jip Rocks, but it's Dentara's on the advanced line to connect on the first shot. But ladies and gentlemen, it's half time. So we've got a second half to get to. We'll see you after the break.
What a first half it has been. And we've got a second one to get through. Different teams on different sides. That's usually what happens at the half. Yes. And so far, Endpoint really showing us that they are here to get that bat dub. But it looks like Zantara, he's giving a bit of a speech. Getting into it, getting ready to get into the action. Eternal Fire, it's their time to shine on the terrorist half. Let's see what they've got for us here in the pistol. Yeah, I really liked Endpoint's T side, and I think they set themselves up for success, but we can't count out Eternal Fire on their T side. So many strong riflers on this team that can take over these crucial parts of the map here on Vertigo. And speaking of which, most of them are storming up ramp. x Flad has that mid push under control, and it's going well so far, but crucial backpedaling still finds a pick. That's Whoa. a ridiculous draw adjustment out of x Flad, and it's all going the way of Eternal Fire for the most part. Everything looking A-OK -okay from Eternal Fire Camp. Palix pushing forward and exactly where the final man is. Boros able to find a headshot of his own, but with 43 HP, it's going to be extremely damn difficult. you got Woxic just falling back, making sure that there is absolutely no chance for Endpoint to win yet another pistol. Boros now. 20 seconds left on the trot. Pretty much 10 to defuse at this point. Yeah, looking like it's a little bit too late. Man's got to go forward. Man's got to go now. And he's going to find nothing. But at least he got the free haircut. Wish I could get mine for free. Bit of a trim myself. Eight to eight, though. All tied up here at the start of the second half. Sure you raise enough money. Maybe you share it, shave all your hair off. Oh. That's free. I think I'm $46,000 away from that. But close enough. That's a big goal. That was a big goal. Well, the stream might be able to help out. Yeah, you guys Where can they donate? Donate to, to good good uh good funds for Movember. Bloody jump on over. It's all on my socials. Now for real. Gonna be donating his life yet to Eternal Fire. They're gonna have to work for this one. Gonna be working that uh, B side of the map. A couple of deacons in the way, but they're just mollying out all of the annoying positions. But we got a lot of firefighters over here on Endpoint, putting out all the flames. Doing good work for the community. Got sure the skyscraper lives on for now, but Zantara says, no, we want to burn this place down, baby. And it's going to be four quick kills going in favor of Eternal Fire. Mighty Max, 1v5 angle. Man's got a deagle. Feels his position. Eternal Fire are happily just going to hold their ground, making sure they don't throw away any rifles. Mighty Max is going to play the pixel line, but with the Deagle, extremely hard, especially when you've already been tagged up. Now he's just got that Deagle armor, so it looks like they're just going to let him save it. Knowing their lives are more expensive than his at the moment. Max is going to one on the exit. There it is. Headshot found eventually. But that's all he'll get. Voxic goes down. Nice little trade. Eternal Fire into the lead again. 9-8. to eight. Yep. The anti-eco, a good opportunity for them to steady their money. As they claim double digits and anticipate the rest of this half. Bot in the upper bracket on the line here. Essentially keeping your second lifeline alive for yourself, I suppose. Another chance to go into the EPL groups. Not something to be taken lightly. And that comes down to everything. That comes down to maintaining as many guns up as possible. Ooh. Keeping this T-side money strong. And so far, so good for the girl fire. Uh, I'm a little bit lost, but they did lose one gun. Emor fell somehow. It yeah. might have even been a team kill. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't read the kill feed fast enough because I'm pretty cooked. But uh, it's all right. Double digits out for Eternal Fire. Yeah. They kept their money very strong. That's what we want to be seeing. This is going to make them a very hard team to beat for Endpoint. But they've shown us a lot of grind all night. Mm. Let's see it again. AWP whipped out straight away. Good new kill across the board. Into the first gun round of this half. Let's see if these guns have much influence. Surreal. Going up on top of the plywood drive. 
Didn't work out for him this time. He really has been trying to take these fights head on. But look at Nurts. This man already fast on the flank. Woxic. It's gone out. But look at the timing. And he's looking for a little bit more. Finds the second. Those rockets here at Maze who gets the trade. But the damage could have already been done. And the information is definitely key in this situation. Yeah, the re-aggression from Boris is just absolutely picture perfect. In the meanwhile, the rest of Endpoint staying active. Well aware that Eternal Fire can try to walk through certain parts of the map. Mm. So they just need to play relatively safe angles and just try to establish what's clean and what's dirty at the moment. So that they can better inform their decision making and 100% this three on two. Make sure they're not getting caught off guard by some kind of timing. So I like the approach from Endpoint. Boros trying to tuck himself behind the gen and hold the jump up. The other two Endpoint players... Kind of just playing retake A, spotting out middle. They just, they want info. Or they go and try to complete this retake with a numbers advantage. Buddy Max. Get as much info as possible. They didn't see any, but Crucial peeking out is ready to hit that trigger. Pencil off to Woxic now, 1v3. It's a bit of sight control, some space to plant, but time definitely against him and crucial. Just swinging in over towards heaven. Got the final kill of the round. Get the first round of the half for end point. Nice and early on the board, uh, winning their first gun round. That's a big one to grab. Yep. And in reasonably convincing fashion as well. Keeps their money nice and strong, which they're going to need to do so. Because Eternal Fire has plenty of funds for another reinvestment. Mm-hmm. And point could go back to back and even things up 10 apiece. That would make for a very entertaining half indeed. Has the assist symbol in the UI always been a handshake? I think it depends on the UI. Not always. There's some where I haven't seen it like that, but okay. one it, it is. Just needed I to like get it. that out of the way. Uh, of course, we did see Nurse just smash his way through mid, asserting dominance onto X Flood, getting that early man advantage for. Point. A couple of bits of U-Tool going to be thrown. Boros set up with the flash from Crucial to get yet another pick for Endpoint. That Molly is going to force him away, but maybe that's not a bad thing. Play the numbers here. What I expected from Endpoint. When they are functioning well as a unit, they can definitely play well on a map like Vertigo. All about those counter flashes and the utilities being placed well. Mm -hmm. Mighty Max... I think completely unchecked at the sandbags is probably just going to lock this one down. No Molly invested into this position. Not going to be using that trigger discipline, which could come back to bite him. However, big damage onto Calyx is enough to enable the rest of the boys to follow. Boros as well. Big flank all the way through. And he's going to mop up two men there. No bomb plant for Eternal Fire. And that means no extra money either. So they're going to be broke as anything going into this round. Calyx could... Drop a couple of pistolas over, maybe. Mm. Um, but other than that, end point. Let's see if Nurts can make his way to where teeth by guns for the third round in a row. Well, maybe not this round. Would have, would not be the best round to do it. But uh, look, those were two of the best uh, rounds picked back possible by end point. Three alive and then four alive into an anti eco now with the hero AK. They need to be wary of. But apart from that, last couple of rounds have been great for Endpoint to try to set themselves up to keep contesting for this third map. Mm. You can sometimes see that CT side economy start to fall flat a little bit, but they're doing the best possible job setting themselves up for success. They need to make sure that they don't lose too many guns in a round like this. And of course, the main threat point being Calyx. Boost at the back, just clear out, jump up, then onto the big box as well. Crucial. Sharp enough to get the flick this time, but already doing a whole lot of work for Endpoint. This map, full second opportunity missed as Crucial goes out into the open. He's just waiting for this nice. pit push to come through, and it's a three man swing. Great coordination yep. on that re aggression and Endpoint. They take the lead 11 to 10. Great coordination, they're rewarded for it. Five alive. Yeah. Look at their money. Going to be hard to put away now. They've probably got uh, at least one more, if not, you know, one more plus half buy into a full buy in the back pocket for end point. 
And Eternal Fire don't want to invest. Maybe saving for full util and or an AWP, perhaps. They're actually going to go in for a Tech 9 half buy, which may catch Endpoint off guard. They may be anticipating a rifle investment here. Crucial on a very solid line to play. Josh, the flash and missed opportunity again, but surreal here at the double stack. Not going to be spotted initially, but he couldn't see a damn mm. thing. And the util creating so much space for Eternal Fire. Dentaris, you can tell the man wants to keep going forward. Calix, he wants the AWP as well. And it hasn't cost him his life, but there's been a whole lot of damage traded both ways. Boros really worried about being just down on 34 HP. So bomb planted and endpoint deciding, you know what? We're just going to hold our ground here at mid. Look to save, look to cause any damage. But again, eternal fire, couple of pistols, faster change in pace. And yep. Some really fortunate timings there onto the CTB players. Uh, it's worked out for them. Yeah, completely different timing than you'd often be anticipating in a round like that. You, yeah. You've gotten a couple of anti ecos out of the way. You're anticipating that gun round. Maybe the other team on the T side goes in contest ramp or something like that, or a slower round, kind of creeping up mid or establishing that stairs control. You're not ready for one of those quicker B execs and the tech nines just kind of streaming in. You're talking about the util as well. Those mollies super on point. The mm -hmm. flashes caught all of the CTs. It couldn't have gone better for Eternal Fire. They pick up the AWP and an A1S. That's going to help out the economy. And, we, were, uh, you know, I was kind of beaming at, at Endpoint's ability to establish their economy. I mean, that is a, a massive slip-up that may come back to bite them later on, losing to the techies like that. Yeah. 11 apiece. This is a damn spicy game. Boost up close here. Runner Rops. Real. Not going to spot it. This position man just hiding for the moment. And Nerds got caught with Util in hand. Surreal going to be kicking himself in here. He's got so many oh. angles to cover. Timing. Oh, almost works out for Zetaras, but coverage was there. Surreal falling. Not going to be able to hold default for now. Emor wants to go forward. And again, all the T's, all eggs in one basket. No lurking through mid, just three straight up the guts of B as Mighty Max goes forward and does huge damage onto Eternal Fire. 18 HP for Kallax to play with makes it zip. That's end point. Maintain the lead, 12 to 11. That's beautiful from end point. That's what you call the 1% timings mm. on, uh, on the boost, the jump up there. Surreal, he didn't have to hold it. He didn't have to. Mighty Max was literally like half a second from having that mid control, but that's the kill. That's the critical kill. It's so easy to just hold the choke point. You're not worried about boost. My mate's got it in one second, yeah. but Surreal being ready for that 1% timing, that's what could have undone that round for endpoint. So massive, massive impact kill. Very, very switched on. Eternal Fire investing in this round, but starting to scrape the bottom of the bank accounts. 10K on Boros. Bank of endpoint right now, man. You heard around with the boys. Oh, yeah. That's Dan. First picked again. Drop a couple of secondaries. You never know when a Deagle could come in handy. Now. Alex. Double nading Rops here. I like the little lineup. It's a real. It's 59 HP. Falls away. Looks to just stay alive. Very important in these 4v5s. Just... To put yourself in a position to get as much info as possible, but also, you know, make sure you're not losing that sight. Boros oh, oh, knows no the way. line up there. It is Box 6 actually <laughs> going to be the one to try to spam back and take out Emor, who's going to be grumpy about that. Man's top fragging for Eternal Fire, but Kalix at least gets a bit of redemption. One on to Mighty Max is a good start to the A side here. Yeah, utility trying oh. to deny the entry in there, but Crucial nails him straight through the flash. Boros. Jumping up, gets a lot of damage into x -Cloud. Bomb is loose right now, and they're still trying to deny the bomb plant with the HE nades. A crucial oh. rewarded for it. Oh. And it's worked. The underarm, perfect, surreal. Headshot found it. Now it's just Zentara's to try to make it happen. 17 seconds. He doesn't have a whole lot to play with. Looking for the headshot over the top. He's oh. really pushing for surreal, oh. crucial. Spotted as well as Zentara's. He might just oh. be able to fight. No surreal gun in hand. 
gets it out in time, holds his ground at Tetris and end point. It's a costly round, but it's another round nonetheless. That's where Banker Boros comes in, mate. Sounds like something out of some kind of fantasy series, but <laughs> just limitless cash. This man's just dishing out the drops. That's really going to help end point out. Man, the timeouts. We've been so light on the timeouts. First timeout at 13.11. Yeah. For Eternal Fire. Insane. It's taking a breather. Boxic forced a Nova. There's, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. This is like Ty esque when they bought the MP7 in, in like 14.14. Where's he going? Last year. This. There's no way you forced bought a Nova no, right now. No, said. Boys. No, he did it, bro. You believe <laughs> this, bro? He if did you not. buy me a Nova, I'm gonna make me. There's no it. way he said that. He's the wizard. He's got the wand. You can't tell me that, Mac. Swish and a flick, my friend. Right. I know it's uh, the the UK players, the Pommies are, of course, on endpoint, but I'm sure Eternal Fire have some kind of magic of their own. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna need the e more cam. Okay, thank you. We all knew. Yep. There's no way he said, give me a he Nova, I'm going to... <laughs> he said that. <laughs> he did it, There's bro. no other words that Emor could have said this round <laughs> in that timeout. Hold on, let me snipe him on the boost. Remember, this <sighs> thing's got range, Pilski. Look at him. Look at the way he moves with that thing. Crucial. Look, he's posted from lobby. What if he just owns the off. Oh, finds the timing over jump up. This is a close range engagement, but the man's looked the wrong direction. Nurts, though, holding down the fort at B. And the B split. It looked good for a moment. Nurts has to go to the reload, but he does have the helping hand of Crucial to uh, wrap things up. And it's a beautiful round from end point. Eternal Fire, they went all in on the previous round. And Pilski, why do you sound like you've been laughing already? Box 6 got 3k, bro. On the Nova Force by this is tilt. This is like premium tilt. Mm. Endpoint's got great money for the most part. An eternal fire. You got your AWP player who has missed port last round. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's they're they're out of it, but it's just like one of those extra mental hurdles that you just don't want to have to deal with in a high pressure game like this. Let's see what they come up with. Another timeout here for Eternal Fire. Endpoint, on the other hand, they're kind of vibing right now. They're playing quite well on this CT side. I don't feel like they need to really discuss too much. Keep doing what they're doing. No head armor for Wok 6, so we'll keep an eye on that. If any A1Ss give him a bit of a 1B, be dangerous. Eternal Fire. Playing the slow game. What that ramp here. Endpoint. Playing around it nicely. Not throwing all that early util. Just holding it. Jump peeking. Mighty Max. Oh, oh <laughs> over nah. the top. And it's Zentara's. done. It's done skis. At least that's a rifle dropped across. <laughs> so let's <laughs> grab it some straws here, Mitch. I'm thirsty. Oh, <laughs> Okay, Boros able to clean that one up. Crucial, huge damage with the AWP this round. And he's looking for a little bit more. Woxic falling as well. 4v2 now, brought back to the 3v2 as x Flood pressures mid. Alex. Flooring towards the stairs. He actually has kind of slipped the net right now. A bit of a timing. Could be joined up with the bomb and oh ooh, it's messy he takes a lot of damage but he gets it done x flag going to join up on towards the site molotov doesn't cover the boost oh. x flag dangerous decision even think about planting that rather than default however the man with the hp calyx in the clutch position minimal remaining he does have a nade to throw mm. Could definitely help out Gonna need that on the tap, but for now, endpoint. They're really using every second here. Smoke over towards nice. danger. There's the nade, but it's crucial to connect now. Coverage surely here from Mighty Max over the top of the sandbags and 
now we see end point with four match points to play with. What a grind from these guys. I mean, you go back to that Mirage game. Mm. That's two. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, they, oh. their win rate's not looking great on that one. But to get it done here would be beautiful for these lads. Continue in that upper bracket. Let's not count Eternal Fire out, though. They have a better buy this time around. The At least AKs and head armor and some util across the board. Four in a row. It's doable. That's oh, not bad. One for one on the T side. And you're kind of pushing the CTs back in their box. They're still on these double orps, which are sometimes a little bit awkward to maneuver around in these four on four scenarios, especially if you're forcing some post plants and retake scenarios. Nice molly. The girder just to clear out underneath the ledge there. Oh, they're looking for the boost up, but Surreal, he's taken the wide line. He's stopped that from being a possibility. And Calix now, out of the equation. It's, it's a 3v4 eternal fire. Looking to be sent to the lower bracket right now. Yeah, it's love, what you love to see for Endpoint. They're playing to win, not playing not to lose. They go one for one. You see aggression from Surreal. Oros re-aggressing middle. Shadow should be spotted. No, it's actually the other direction, but X-Flout reacts just in the nick of time. Zentara's close range, just to close the distance, and he's going to have the advantage at that range with the AK. Just like that, man advantage swings back in the T's favor. Deep Smoke to Elevator, Molly at Tetris, and Mighty Max. He's damn out in the open. Kind of a nice line here. He's got Surreal as well, covering over the top. There's the first shot missed, but Mighty Max going to be a one for one, one on one, brought all the way back. x Flout had a bit of a rough start to the series, but can he keep Eternal Fire oh. in it? No, Surreal over the top and end point continue in the upper